Ladies and gentlemen, special guests, and distinguished visitors, welcome to the Enid Armed Forces Reserve Center. We are very pleased you've decided to join us for our press conference today at Vance Air Force Base with the family of Specialist Donald P. Sloat. Each of you should have received a press packet when you arrived. If you did not, just let my deputy, Lieutenant Colonel White, know and she'll take care of you. My name is Colonel Max Moss and I am the Director of Media Relations for the Oklahoma National Guard. For clarification, Specialist Sloat was not a member of the National Guard. He was an active duty U.S. Army soldier. Because of our proximity to the honorees family, we were asked by the Department of Army Public Affairs to assist the Sloat family with media engagements and I can tell you we are very, very honored to do so. Let me take a brief moment to explain how we'll be conducting today's press conference. After I conclude my comments, Specialist Sloat's family members will each make an opening statement. After their opening comments, they will take questions from the media. I would just ask that you identify yourselves by name, including which media organization you work with, and then ask your question. After we're done taking questions from the floor, each of the family members has very graciously agreed to do individual interviews with the press. We'll split them into different corners of the room so you may interview them. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize one of our Vietnam veterans who's come to visit us today because of his relationship and care and concern for Specialist Sloat. Specialist for Mike Mulheim is in the back of the room. Mr. Mulheim, would you please raise your hand, sir? We're very, very honored that you're here. Thank you, sir. Now, I'd like to introduce our honored guest, the siblings of Specialist Sloat. Seated on the left end of the conference table is Karen McCaslin. Karen is from Mounds, Oklahoma, and she was 10 years old when her brother was killed in action in 1970. Seated in the middle is Dr. Bill Sloat. Dr. Sloat is Specialist Sloat's older brother, and he lives here in Enid. To his left is Kathy Sloat of Coweta, Oklahoma. Kathy was almost five years old when her brother sacrificed his life for our nation. Specialist Donald P. Sloat was serving in the Republic of Vietnam as a machine gunner with 3rd Platoon, Company D, 2nd Battalion, 1st Infantry Regiment, 196th Light Infantry Brigade, AmeriCal Division. On the morning of January the 17th, 1970, Specialist Sloat Squad was on patrol in the Quezon Valley when the lead soldier tripped a wire attached to a hand grenade booby trap set by the enemy. Realizing the hand grenade was about to explode and would likely kill some of the men near him, after initially attempting to throw the grenade, he chose to draw the grenade into his very own body. Shielding his fellows, squad members, from the blast and saving their lives. It was for this extraordinary act of heroism and selflessness that the President of the United States recently announced that Specialist Sloat would be receiving our nation's highest military honor posthumously. The Sloat family and many close friends will be at the White House on September the 15th when President Barack Obama plans to present the Medal of Honor to Dr. Sloat, who will accept this pre prestigious honor on his brother's behalf. At this time, we will now take individual, or we will now do the opening statements from each of the family members. Kathy? Oh, I'm sorry, Karen. You want me to start? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Thank all of you for being here today. Greatly appreciate it. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for one's friend. John 15, 13. Our brother Don, he was a true American hero in every sense of the words, and he loved his family and we loved him. He loved his friends and he was proud to be an American. And he chose his path into the Army because it was what he wanted to do. 
He volunteered to be an American soldier. I want to thank Colonel Moss and Lieutenant Colonel Davis for your support and everything that you've done th for us through this, through this moment. And I want to thank Colonel Francis Narone and Leslie Hines with the AmeriCal Historical Division for their hard work collecting all the necessary records, statements, and documents and testimonies of the events of Don's actions on January 17, 1970. I want to express great heartfelt love toward Michael Mulhine, Bill Hacker, Dwayne Lewis, the late Elwood Tipton, and the late Paul Wooten. It is because of your bond of friendship with Don and the testimonies of the accounts of that day that this nomination for the Medal of Honor on his behalf is being made possible. I want to thank our mother for her love of her children and her son. I want to thank her for her faith and her belief in God that this day would happen. And it's through her tenacity and her strength that it is being made possible. Not only do I want to thank Don for being the person that he was in the actions of that day, but I want to thank all the brave men and women of the armed forces. I want to thank each and every one of them. And it is because of them and because of Don that we are shown what true love and true sacrifice is. Thank you. Dr. Slope. <clears throat> Thanks everyone for coming today. I would like to thank our host, Colonel Quinn of the Vance Air Force Base and the National Guard for these facilities and hosting this event. If Don were here he'd, and be seated beside you, you'd look at him and you would think he's no different than the rest of us. That's the kind of person he is. He's an everyday human being. He was kind and generous, a people person, and he would help anybody that needed help. Now, we all get to somewhat direct our own pathways. And Don um, chose to enter the Army. And in the process of choosing to enter the Army, um, he was turned down because he had high blood pressure. He reapplied several times. Memory fails me. I'm thinking four to seven times, but he eventually got in and this became his new family. It was his pathway. And uh, the events of that particular day, uh, he chose to be there. He had a new family, the military, and he enjoyed them. And um, if he were there, he would say he would do it again. Thank you. Hi, I would like to thank God first and foremost for allowing us to be here. Um, secondly, I would like to thank the city of Coweta um, and the citizens. I grew up not really knowing my brother because I was so young, but yet I did because the people that he went to school with, that he knew, that he played sports with, always made it a point to stop me and to tell me stories of my brother, my mother. <laughs> my mother was the strongest person that I've known. Um, she never gave up and she instilled that in each and every one of us. Um, her values, her faith, and the stories that she told. Um, a mother that had lost three sons. She, amazing, amazing. Thank all of you for this honor. We will now take individual questions from the media here today. We'd ask that you raise your hand so you can use our wireless microphone uh, as we're live streaming the press conference. So if you would. Uh, first question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Dildon Walt, Enid News and Eagle. Um, uh, tell us about your mother and uh, what, uh, what role she had in, in bringing your brother's story uh, to the forefront uh, so that, you know, that he would be recognized for this. I, I would love to take that question, but my <clears throat> mother lived with my sister Karen. She was her caregiver. Mom, it was mom's vision, but Karen and Kathy are the legs to that vision, 
and they know the events of that circumstances. So I think they can best tell that part of the story. Karen? Thank you. For years, it was not known of the actions of that day. Um, we were told that Don had initially had stepped on a landmine. And approximately 40 years after his death, uh, we were told about a website that someone had posted a statement about Don being a hero and what he had done. And it wasn't but just a few short weeks after reading that that Mr. Mulhine called my mother. And he recounted the events of that day, which set forth my mother's goal and her belief that this could happen, that we contacted different individuals in the Army, uh, found out uh, the records, and because of uh, Francis Narone, Colonel Narone, and Leslie Hines doing the investigation and doing the, the legwork and putting the, the packet and the correct forms together and everything, we found out the actual events, and they were able to contact the other men that were in Don's platoon. Uh, the ones who were injured that day and recount the story about what happened. And it was, it was because of mom and her love for Don and the belief that, that he needed to be recognized for his actions. And she fought long and hard for it. And unfortunately, she, she passed away December 24th, 2011. And um, she's, not, she's not here to receive that, but, but she's with us, in each of us. Next question, please. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Floyd McCoy. I'm writing a book on the Vietnam War. And I have a Facebook page. I've met Kathy and her sister, and I just want to say I'm very happy for you all. I'm very emotional. Uh, one of the things I wanted to know was that uh, what are the plans for the Medal of Honor? Is there going to be some type of exhibit put in in Coweta? Or what are the family's plans? It's kind of a unique object. I was just wondering what the family's plans were for the actual Medal of Honor. They're all looking at me, I think. <laughs> and I think that what we will do is we'll sit down later and decide. One of the stories your mother told me was about how she had gone to uh, Edgar Pulliam's house to offer her condolences to his family and she was thinking that Don was going to come uh, escort his body home and when she arrived home she discovered that there was an army car in front of her house and she made the assumption that the car was there to tell her that your brother was coming home to escort Edgar's body home. Uh, could you tell me if you know how close those two were, Edgar Pulliam and, and your brother? Yeah, I do. How close? How were? close the Pulliam and, and my brother and Don were? Um, I know that he had a bond, a friendship with all the young men uh, that were in Vietnam at that particular time. Um, I don't. I don't know that they were like best buddies or anything like that, but uh, they were, he was a friend of all of them. And, and, it, and it was initially because of that friendship with all of them and, and all of them being from the same school and the same age group that they felt a type of honor bound to become part of the army and become part of the, the military at that particular time. As I'm, I'm sure you know, the Coweta has the distinction of having the highest loss of any American city per capita. Per capita. And it, and it often referred to the guys from Coweta or the boys from Coweta, a lot of people say. Uh, of the eight Coweta, the Coweta eight, who was your brother most fond of, if you remember some activities they participated in or do you have any anecdotes about any of them like, in that respect? Because it's so unusual that the, the, your city would be hit so hard. Of his class of 67, four students from that class were killed in Vietnam, and three within six weeks. 
And I know, Kathy, you were very young, so you probably, I just wondered if the rest of you had any stories about one time, Don, do, do y'all call him Don or Donald? What, what name does he go by in the family? Don okay. was how he was known by. Yeah, who do you think he's most close to? I would say that he was, he was fairly friendly with the Campbell boy, Jimmy Campbell. They played football together. Right. And uh, because of that, I, I know that there was a, a athletic association in addition to military association. But I cannot tell you if, if they were close friends. I know that I have a letter that he had written back once he was at Fort Polk. And uh, in the letter, he mentions uh, the Pulliam boy and the Campbell boy about seeing them there at Fort Polk. And, uh, and then several of his letters once he was in Vietnam uh, asking mom about the different guys and if she had heard anything from the families and, you know. But as far as like being best friends with any of them, I, I think it was just the age group and the friendship at the time that they had. Uh, uh, pardon me if I seem to be hogging the press conference, but I just had a few more questions if you don't mind. Uh, when Donald went into the Army, was his goal to be a career officer or a career soldier, or was he planning on getting out soon and starting a new career? Did he have any ambition that he wanted to do certain things in life? I think, I think he saw it as a short-term term to achieve long-term goals. Basically, it was a new home for him during a time where he was struggling to attend school. So he was thinking to go to, into the military to use as a springboard for uh, uh, GI Bill so he could attend college. And I don't think, at least at that time, he had any long-term aspirations of, of career. Um, in his letters, he often talks about coming back to the world. So the world of Vietnam, at least for him, was something he would have liked to have um, uh, left behind and not stay in very long. Now, he did well in the Army, and so I don't know if he would have maintained it or not. Uh, your mother told me some stories about how while he's in Vietnam, he and the other soldiers would often go to an orphanage. And mainly it's because he missed Kathy. He wanted to be around the young children. Do you all have any stories about that? You may not I even know. Hear him. I can't hear He mentioned the orphanage in Vietnam that Don liked him. There's a letter where he, he wrote back home about visiting uh, the children's orphanage at Christmas time, yes. Mm. He, uh, I think it was Michael who recanted the story, recalled the story about uh, a little girl in a, a lollipop or ice cream cone or something. And so they, I mean, he, they, they did what they had to do while they were there. And they, you know, it, it was a, a good time. That was a good time to get to, to visit. Uh, in some of my re research, uh, there, we have what the group that's called the Coeta Eight. Right. And sometimes there's an additional fellow named uh, Reuben Dyke or Reuben Dykes. Do you know any information about him by chance? Uh, that he's from the area or something like that. And he's often considered one of the Coeta guys. Sometimes he's not on the official yes, list. Yes, he he's also from the Coeta area, and he and he did come home from Vietnam. But unfortunately, ab about a month after he came home, um, he chose to take his life. Uh, sorry. Thank you for telling us that. Uh, I want to give the other folks a chance, but I wanted to tell you a, a story that I've been working on this book for several years, and I, I met your mother several years ago when I was first starting. But I came to Coweta to do some research around town, and your friend Christy called your mother told her I was in town doing research on the project and she told me to hike myself over as soon as possible because she wanted to tell me about your brother. It was a very enjoyable experience that I had that day with her. She told me a lot of things and I'm going to be able to use those in my uh, project. Um, but as a result of doing that project I've gone on and investigated other individuals and I wanted you to know that because of my interest in uh, the Medal of Honor for your brother under these fact scenarios 
that I found two additional Oklahoma soldiers who, I guess used the phrase, threw himself on a grenade to save his fellow people. And if I hadn't been looking into your brother's situation, I would not have been able to find those two individuals who have not been honored yet. I'm just barely getting the information and I hope at some point to turn it over to their families so they would have the opportunity to do what you did to see that their brother or family member was adequately honored. Uh, it's been my pleasure to have known Kathy and, and you. I'm glad to meet you today. I brought my son with me. And I, I think it's a great day. Thank you very much for those questions, sir. Next question, please. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Christy Wheeler with the Coweta American. Back in 1999, Coweta brought the Vietnam veteran moving wall to the community, which had a tremendous impact on our town, um, given the history that it had um, with Vietnam. What did that mean to you as a family for that opportunity to come to Coweta, for others to be able to pay for their respects, not only to your brother, but to the others that were there? I remember that day very, very well. Um, up until about that time, the whole Vietnam situation and Don's death, it had always been very hard for mom to express her feelings and to talk to, about it. Uh, over the years that she had been asked to do interviews and, and just, you know, talk about having a son that, that had died in Vietnam. And she would decline and wouldn't do it. But when the wall came to Coweta, it was a big deal. It really was. And uh, I think that she kind of came out of her shell at that particular time and was able to finally sit down and talk about losing her son. And it was an emotional day. It was an emotional day. And uh, it, uh, it's my hope that uh, while we're in Washington that we can take the opportunity to actually see the living wall and to see Don's name. Over the years, uh, people who have visited have sent back uh, etchings of Don's name, which means a lot, but I would, I would love to see it myself. Did you want to say something? No, I, I recall that day as well. Um, and the stories, the stories that she, when she opened up, the stories just poured. It, it was great, it was a great day. Next question, please. Delton Walt from the Eden News and Eagle again. Uh, who, when, when the White House um, uh, said that Don was going to get the Medal of Honor, who got the call, and what was what was your reaction? Uh, that was me. Um, I was tipped to be aware that on a certain time period I was to receive a call from someone important, and uh, since it was military, that was my thinking. I knew that. Um, the Medal of Honor was a possibility, so I expected it to be President Obama. He was, uh, he sounds just like he does on television, and um, he was um, very polite and nice. said he was looking at Don's uh, bio. He certainly deserved the award. Look forward to seeing us in Washington, D.C., and uh, was thankful for people of Don's character to serve in the military. Were you, uh, were, were you emotionally overcome or uh, speechless or in any of those terms or uh, well, was, I was it something you expected? I was bursting with pride as one of my sisters. That, this was just extremely emotional. Um, but no, I wasn't overcome. Um, I was thankful that for Don's sake that he won it. I was thankful for my mother's sake. You, you see in our stories how everything's intertwined through them, and we understand that it's Don's award, but we feel it's Mom's story to get that award. 